So we have three pages now um, and 56 uh, people signed in, uh, which is just, just wonderful. Uh, Bryce Bow and Amy Osajima are here. <clears throat> Katie Beck, hello. Is this Amy? Yes. And Glenda Murray. Lance, DGN. Right. <laughs> Good afternoon, everyone. Hey, Lance. So Brewington. We have a few minutes more uh, to, to uh, you know, randomly chat, How is uh, welcoming new people. Is Owen it, Johnson. Is everybody Aaron Brewington. <laughs> Excuse me. Is everybody healthy? Yeah. Yes. So I far. have no idea what I'm doing. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's normal. I'm healthy now. You know, I, I think I had that virus. I had something pretty bad, but I'm really good now. Good. So, and did you that's have it? I had it from March 3rd till I put my thermometer away Sunday. Wow. Is that Jean? It is. Hi, Charlotte. Hi, how are you? Good. I see Shannon from Vincent's. Mm -hmm. How are you, girl? Good. It's good to see you. I'm happy on mute. I'm good. <laughs> good. That's fun that you joined us. This is a pretty cool around the world meeting. Exciting. It is, actually. And happy birthday to um, at least two people. One, the Clarice who's joining us in tomorrow. <laughs> yeah, she's in tomorrow. She is the future. She is. She's in <laughs> April 1st already. <laughs> so what's going to happen tomorrow, Clarice? Um, so it's actually not a lockdown here yet, um, but many people have guessed that either tomorrow or the next day could be the lockdown. So um, could be an April Fool's, maybe not. Um, we'll see. But yep. Where are you right now? What? Where are you? I'm in Tokyo. Okay. Yeah. In Japan. Mm -hmm. so Konnichiwa. Both. What? Tokyo. Konnichiwa. Uh, <laughs> Tokyo uh, and Berlin are represented here. Cool. And, and Bedford. Hello, John Bush. Hello. President Bush on here. And I've got somebody in the laughter. She she's she insists on watching. <laughs> <laughs> it's good to see a second Evansville person is on board. Carrie Black from Youth First. Oh. Yes, welcome. Welcome, Carrie. So, Jim, Jim Bright, is there anyone that you'd like to, to mention? Uh, let's see. Uh, do, do you want me to jump in and do that now, Aaron, or do you want me to um, wait? No, there, there yeah. are still people arriving, so, okay. but just somebody who hasn't been noticed yet. Well, let's see. I see, is it uh, Julie on there? Julie Hoon? Yeah. Yes, hello. Hi. Hi there. Welcome. Calling, also joining from Evansville to support Becky Jesmer. Very uh, good. Hey. I see uh, Bill Eskew on, on the screen there. Yes. I just wanted to say hello to Floyd. Yeah. Great. Uh, hi, Floyd. I have a connection. Hi, hi. yes. <laughs> Amazing, isn't it? <laughs> Sure is. Yeah, I worked with Floyd when I was in the Warsaw Club. Oh my goodness. Good to see Lance Everly here, another governor in waiting. Mm -hmm. Nice to see everybody. Oh, look at James Dog. <laughs> <laughs> Two participants. Had to get my toy in for a minute. Yay, Lance. Woohoo. All right. <laughs> One of our newest uh, members and Aaron uh, there from uh, Smithville Communications. Right, and, and Dick McCaig. Hello. Welcome. Dick, where are you? Oh, come on. And Judy Bush. Well, Judy. Right. Where is Dick? Hello. Hi, dear Judy. Yeah. Hi, Rosie. Different pages. Um, <laughs> yeah, little. Arrow oh, hi, Sandy. 
Did you hear me, Sandy? Oh, good. yes. I didn't know if anybody could hear me. <laughs> we hear you. Well, Aubrey has her cat too. We've got a four, two four leggeds with us. Oh, my mine is sleeping. <laughs> but I got balloons. Yeah, I love them. Do. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, I have some flowers and also some heart balloons because I'm sending a lot of love. Oh, nice. Thank you. Wonderful. Thank That's you. Beautiful. Here's the heart. Can you see the heart? Brian Hayes. Oh, this is a, my a heart to yours. <laughs> Brian, hey, this is a virtual lunch, but I'm glad you're having an actual lunch. Ms. <laughs> Swanson just joined us. Excellent. I uh, see Rosie the Clown. Yeah, I'm here. All right. Are you, are you dressed and ready to go? Uh, not as a clown today, no. <laughs> well, welcome, Rosie. Thank you. Mr. Oh. Rosie is very busy doing tax returns, so he's not going to join. <laughs> oh yeah, July is uh, it's coming yeah. up. <laughs> <laughs> you hear that, Mr. Rosie? Yeah. He's behind me. <laughs> I hate them, so I want to get done with it. <laughs> he said he hates them, so he wants to get done with it. I don't blame you. And Tina Swanson is here. Walt Kuhn. Oh. Excellent. Um, I think we might as well get started. What do you What do you say? Um, so who's who's introducing? <laughs> I'm waiting to be introduced. You're waiting to be introduced. <laughs> oh well. Hi, Charlotte. In, in the big sense, I, okay. I, I did mention your name, but welcome, <laughs> to Ellie Gaskell. Um, no, I mean, I. So let's let's uh, get started. And what we normally do to ring, uh, ring the chime, and to get ready. Very good. So, uh, the recording is going on. Welcome to the Bloomington Rotary Club's weekly celebration of service for March thirty first, twenty twenty. I'm Aaron Davis, the current president of our club. And it is just wonderful to see you, uh, everyone here, so many, including numerous special guests. Uh, so we currently have 64 people wow. participating and that, that's outstanding. Uh, so I will now announce Sally Gasco uh, <laughs> to, uh, to lead the pledge and to uh, give a reflection afterwards. So- Okay, thank you, Aaron. Laugh. And I would like to suggest that everyone unmute yourself just for now so that we can all hear each other for the pledge. We stand. You can stand if you like. Mm -hmm. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty, liberty and justice, justice for all. For all. <laughs> Do not need to remain silent. First graders do. Yeah. Okay, and now I would ask that everyone mute yourself. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Okay. How do I do that? It's a little um, mute button on the lower left hand side of your screen. Or you can just stay quiet. <laughs> <laughs> and, and I can mute. Oh, I can mute anybody. That's a uh, I can, much to ask. I can mute anybody's microphone if they're having trouble. Okay, great. So I have to confess that when I got um, Aaron's email this morning at 9 a.m. reminding me that I was doing the Pledge and Reflection today, I had totally forgotten. So I'm giving um, a reflection that um, is something that I've been thinking about for a long time. I'm not going to reflect on the coronavirus um, for what that's worth, but I am going to reflect on the legacy of my maternal grandmother who was born today, many years ago in 1896 in a small town in Western Kansas. Um, so March 31st has been a special day for me for a long time. I know that both Sandy and Clarice have birthdays tomorrow on April 1st. I don't know if anybody else has a May, March 31st birthday. 
but here we go. So uh, my grandmother, Jessie Lee, was born in um, Hill City, Kansas. If you've ever been to Western Kansas, you'll know it really is quite desolate. It's very rural. I don't think it's changed much from 1896 to today, uh, 2020. Um, but uh, grandmother um, came from an educated family. Her father was the superintendent of schools in Hill City and she went to college and she graduated from the University of Kansas in 1918, which of course, as we now know, um, or are recalling, it was the same year as the flu, uh, in Spanish flu pandemic throughout the world. Um, grandma, grandmother graduated from the University of Kansas in 1918 uh, with a journalism degree. She was one of a small handful of women to be in that class. Um, the Great War was, of course, also raging um, in Europe, and she went home that summer to Hill City and sewed for the Red Cross. She taught school for a year or two, and then she met my grandfather, Vaughn Williams, from Memphis, uh, and they married and lived for the rest of their lives in Kansas City, Missouri. Um, so grandmother was not a Rotarian because of course she really couldn't have been in her lifetime because women were not allowed, but I think that she definitely practiced service above self for her entire um, life. Um, so when she had small children, my mother and my aunt, she started a, a preschool in her home so that she could probably bring in a little bit of income during the Great Depression, but also have children around her. She was a lifelong teacher, just not outside the home. She never worked, quote, outside the home. Eleanor Roosevelt was her role model. Uh, she sewed all of her family's clothing, including mine when I was a child. But beginning in the 1950s, uh, she dedicated many years of her life to an organization called the Hospitalized Veterans Writing Project, a national project in which women worked with young and old hospitalized veterans to help them write creatively about their experiences. Um, here's a photocopy of the veterans' voices from the 1970s. Um, she, it's, full of, it's full of stories, wonderful stories and poems, both prose and poetry from from individuals, mostly men, who were in hospital because of their service. Um, and then uh, um, she also dedicated her life to um, advising young women, to helping them figure out how they could get to college. Um, another story is that she and my grandfather had a handyman from Kansas City, an African-American man uh, named Oliver, whom I remember. Oliver wanted to become a minister, but it turns out he was illiterate. So grandmother taught him to read and he realized his dream. So she died when I was in my twenties, um, but her influence on my life and on all of her grandchildren has been strong. So a couple of years ago, when the centennial of her graduation from KU was approaching, several of my cousins and I worked with the School of Journalism there to start a scholarship in her honor. It's meant to be for a woman or a person of color as part of a needed financial package. We started with just a little bit of funding. None of us had much money, but a second cousin uh, from Colorado who also knew her sent $10,000 to help give the fund a nice jump start. And we're continuing to add to the scholarship fund every year. Um, several Rotarian ties. Jesse Lee could not be a Rotarian, but her father was back in Hill City, Kansas. And then local ties here in Bloomington. Del Brinkman was a longtime member of our club until recently. He was a former dean of that school of journalism and he encouraged me to get in touch with the current dean um, to make an event and set up the scholarship fund. And then finally, Ron Johnson, who's another former member of our club, sent me this. It's the alumni magazine from uh, the University of Kansas, the Jayhawk Journalist, which um, had a story about the scholarship fund in the event that we had a couple of years ago for my grandmother. So uh, thanks for listening to my story uh, for my grandmother, Jessie Lee Messick-Williams, born today in 1896. Thank you, Sally. Thank you. Uh, and now I'd like to acknowledge today's greeters, Michael Chermis, Winston Schindel, and Steve Engel. I uh, didn't see Steve here. He may be here, though. Uh, also, a roundabout reporter for March, Sarah Laughlin, and our roundabout editor, Judy Schroeder. Thank you so much for continuing 
uh, the roundabout's tradition of excellence during the COVID-19 pandemic and our move over to virtual meetings. Uh, thanks to our Communications Committee co-chair, Alan, Alan Barker, for providing our club with a virtual Zoom room to hold this gathering and for helping uh, members and guests get signed in. Same with uh, Michael Shermis. Uh, thank you. Uh, special thanks to Natalie Blaze, our executive assistant, and past district governor, Jim Bright, who is more responsible for I am, than I am for all of this, uh, this wonderful attendance, um, as well as Kyla Cox-Decker, uh, our treasurer, and our president-elect, Ashley Sullivan. So now for the introduction of guests, and this will be brief uh, because a lot of you all already have met each other, uh, but Jim Bright will begin with the introductions. Okay, thank you, uh, Aaron. Uh, we're pleased to have today with us uh, the Rotary Inf uh, International Director, Floyd Lancia. Um, you'll be hearing from Floyd a little bit later. Welcome, Floyd. Um, also, I think this is the first Rotary Club meeting I've ever attended that has the full district governor line. Uh, district Governor Santana uh, Naidu of Terre Haute, uh, District Governor-elect Jessica Hain of Sunrise, uh, District Governor nominee uh, Kirk Bushy of Vincennes, and uh, District Governor-designate uh, <clears throat> Lance Eberle of our own club. You'll be hearing more about Lance here in a little while. Also, we're uh, glad to have with us today uh, Shannon O'Toole, who's our District RLI Chair from Vincennes. Welcome, Shannon. Uh, Randy Wheeler from uh, the Rotary Club of Evansville, uh, the largest club in our district, <clears throat> and uh, Randy is our district secretary. Uh, we have a number of past district governors uh, with us today, and if I miss anybody, uh, please uh, uh, raise your hand and acknowledge yourself. But um, uh, past district governor Judy Bush and uh, past district governor uh, Terry Fry, Judy from Bedford, Terry Fry formerly from um, uh, North Vernon. Any, any other past district governors I'm missing? Okay, and, and today is a special day. Um, as some of you know, I'm, the, uh, I'm proud to be the district governor or district uh, scholarship chair. And for the first time, uh, we have with us today, our three Rotary Global Grant Scholars. Um, say hello to Aubrey Cedar. Uh, Aubrey, who received her master's degree in arts and cultural management from King's College London in January and spoke at our club back in February. Welcome, Aubrey. Uh, guten Tag, uh, Alex Starry. Uh, she's wrapping up her uh, work for her master's degree in public policy from the Hurted School of Governance in Berlin. And she'll speak at several clubs, including our own, in August. By the way, it's uh, 6 p.m., a little after 6 p.m in Berlin, uh, where uh, Alex is joining us from her apartment. And then uh, uh, last but not least, uh, Kon Banwa uh, to Clarice uh, Cross, that's good evening, um, where uh, it's uh, Clarice's birthday today, April the 1st, um, and she's joining us from her apartment in Tokyo. Clarice is majoring in international development at Waseda University there, and uh, it's good to have the three of you here with us today. Uh, turn it over to Michael Shermis. Uh, thanks, Jim. Okay, so I'm gonna try to introduce people that have, uh, uh, haven't been uh, recognized by uh, Jim, um, and there's uh, at least 13 of them. So uh, and if by case I missed, I apologize. A little, I have to, have to write really fast to try to get everybody's name as they're coming on. Um, so there's uh, Shannon O'Toole, uh, Melissa Stone, Becky Jesmer, um, Jim Gilslon, I think, I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing that right. Um, Ali Langren, Brian Hain, oh, I think you may have mentioned them. Um, Von Welch, Megan Gearhart, Jana Pritchett, and Perry Black, Aaron Brewington, and Julie Hoon. I believe, I think I got everybody else, but if you don't, please speak up and say hi. Okay, and uh, Jim, by the way, is a uh, past district governor from Vincennes. Jim, so good to have you with us. And, and Melissa is the uh, current president of the Bloomington Sunrise Club and Brian Hain, president of the Bloomington North Club. Uh, so we all know you, a lot of you. Um, and it's just wonderful to have you here. So welcome, welcome everyone to Rotary in Bloomington. Uh, I want to also recognize others who have signed into this meeting 
via phone or internet without video. We may not see you, but your engagement is deeply appreciated. So I'll start with uh, the Rotary family. Uh, we have some birthdays uh, this week. March 29th, Liz Irwin, uh, Sandy Keller and Steve Moberly on April 1st, Sarah Laughlin coming up on April 2nd, uh, Tina Peterson April 3rd, and Lynn Schwartzberg April 4th. And then we have uh, membership anniversaries, Monica Croner, 30 years, Tina Swanson, 31 years, Charlotte Zitlow, 32 years. Congratulations, and Jerry Padgett, 14 years, five of which were with our club. So thank you all and congratulations on those anniversaries. Um, Rotarians in the news, I just wanna mention uh, the, uh, well, obviously the HT and Bloom Magazine and other local media are always covering our members uh, and our activities. But uh, recently, uh, members Lynn Schwartzberg and David Koop appeared in a WTHR new segment about One World Catering and its special volunteer service to our community during the COVID crisis. Now, I want to introduce Trent Deckard, our membership co-chair, along with Dave Meyer, to do a membership induction. I mean, this is a real treat. Uh, she, Becky's not going to be a virtual member. She's going to be inducted virtually. Uh, Trent. All right. Thank you very much, President Aaron. And uh, I first off want to start by thanking both Aaron for really enabling this process where we keep moving and keep inducting. And I also want to thank both Becky uh, for for, as I told her on the phone, going to the moon for Rotary uh, with a virtual induction. And I also want to thank Youth First for being willing to do that along with Becky's sponsor, Liz Irwin. So what I'm going to do next, I'm going to read to you about Becky Jesmer. Becky, give a wave if you could so that folks uh, see you there and make sure that we, you know who we're, we're recognizing and honoring. And I'm going to read about her and Youth First, our new organizational member. And then I'm going to do the induction ceremony. And uh, and uh, we'll let this play out. Hope you enjoy it. Becky Jesmer, a Bloomington native and IU graduate, enjoys spending time with family and friends, especially her husband and two emerging adult children. She loves to cook, cheer on her Hoosiers, sample craft beer, travel, and listen to live music. Often you will find her walking on the Bee Line or Clear Creek Trail, soaking up as much of the outdoors as possible. And when time allows, she'll slip down to Tennessee, participate in some ax throwing. Yes, I just said ax throwing, and that is a thing. And listen to great musical talent there in Nashville. And we hope to get her back to Nashville as soon as circumstances obviously allow. In 2008, life shifted and it created a path for Becky to be introduced to the world of nonprofit and volunteering. She began working at WFYI in Indianapolis and quickly learned the value of volunteering and giving back to community. Her career brought her to public media, the public media stations located on IU's campus, WTIU, WFIU, very familiar to us. Her work allowed her to interact with individual donors, corporate donors, other nonprofits and small businesses located throughout South Central Indiana. She was able to listen to their needs and help them use their donated dollars in manners that fit their interests. All of her work brought Becky to Youth First in the fall of 2019. Youth First exists to strengthen and transform the lives of young people and their families. Founded in 98, Youth First Incorporated is a 501c3 organization that serves Indiana youth and families throughout South Central Indiana, including right here in Monroe County. As a parent who has been heavily involved in her children's lives, whether at their schools or through their extracurricular activities, Becky has been, has been both successful uh, Becky has seen both successful children and children that could be successful uh, if given the proper tools throughout this community. She was intrigued by the idea that society can be helpful and reach young people before they make damaging choices. It is youth first commitment to serving communities and families, family based evidence based programs that Becky finds most appealing about the vital organization. 
Youth First Social Work Services and programs help prevent substance abuse, promote healthy behaviors, and maximize student success. The tools that Becky has been looking for help to look, help her community be successful. As a fundraiser for Youth First, Becky's able to share her love of community and desire for a healthy next generation with folks who can help donate and give back to their community. And she looks forward to working with Rotary in the effort uh, to connect with more people here in the community and do those sorts of things. And so that is our new member and the organization Youth First that's coming in. And now I will begin the new member induction ceremony, which will be familiar to all Rotarians. Becky, on behalf of the board and membership of Bloomington Rotary Club, it is a great pleasure to welcome you as the newest member of our club, and particularly before all these Rotarians throughout Indiana and in our leadership. We look forward to the fellowship that you will share, as well as your participation in many club projects that make our community, country, and world a better place. Though Rotary is not a political organization, Rotarians are vitally concerned with good citizenship and the election of strong leaders to public office. While Rotary is not a religious organization, it is built on those eternal principles that have served as a moral compass for people throughout ages. Rotary is an organization of business and professional people pledged to uphold the highest ethical and moral standards. Rotarians believe, that, believe the worldwide fellowship and peace is achieved when people unite with our motto of service above self. Rotary activities exemplify the charity and sacrifice that one would expect from people who believe they have a responsibility to help others. Becky, you were chosen for membership in Bloomington Rotary Club because your fellow members believe you to be a leader in our community and because you possess the qualities to champion the message and principles of Rotary. You're a representative of your vocation within our club and community. You now become an ambassador of Bloomington Rotary, carrying the ideals of service to all within your sphere of influence. Our community will know and judge Rotary by your character and your service. And we look to you for inspiration as we strive to become better Rotarians. I now ask you, Becky, to pin yourself with the distinguishing badge of a Rotarian, your Rotary pin. And this is your certificate that we, you already have in hand. We ask, and normally your sponsor would be doing this, but obviously she cannot be with you, but I know Liz uh, is with you in spirit. We ask that you wear your rotary pin with pride, not only to all rotary functions, but in your many endeavors as a symbol of your commitment to rotary ideals and our recognition of your contribution towards our better world. With that, fellow Rotarians, I would ask that you please join me with virtual applause in welcoming our newest Rotarian, Becky Jesmer, and Youth First. Yay! Congratulations. 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 Congrats. Congratulations. Way to go. Welcome Congratulations. Congratulations. Well done. And please say a couple of words, Becky. Um, Thank you so much. Um, thanks to Trent for his um, uh, hand holding during this process. And uh, thanks to Liz for the leadership. Um, I'm excited about being introduced to Rotary and I'm excited about introducing Rotary to Youth First or maybe uh, you know sharing a little bit more if you've already been introduced to Youth First. And I'm just excited as, as a local Bloomington gal who's born and raised here just to be able to continue to serve my um, community. Yay. Thank you, Becky, and, and thank you, Trent. Uh, excellent. Oh, that's wonderful. Um, I also want to welcome Joy Harder and uh, Megan Gearhart. Um, Megan is, uh, is a, an officer of the Rotaract Club at Indiana University. Um, did I miss anyone else? Has anyone else come in? It's all Jack Kirtland. I'm not sure if uh, we mentioned Jack earlier. Oh, no, I didn't see. Hi, Jack. Okay, well, so now is a time just giving some updates. I'm going to defer most of those uh, to the roundabout reporter. And, uh, but I do want to mention that the board and committees are active on, on Zoom and email, uh, community service 
communications and scholarship committee are all in, very actively engaged. Um, Hal Turner is co coordinating a club service project to help members and families who are shut in to get delivery of food and supplies if they're uh, unable to. And Steve Engel and Katie Beck have volunteered. If you're interested in joining uh, or receiving help, contact Hal, please. Um, we're going to have a Rotary Zoom Cafe to socialize on Zoom weekly on Thursdays from 7 to 8.30 p.m. I wanted to announce that. We want to and need to stay connected. The Rotary Fellowship is one of the real supports in my life, and uh, this will be great. So it's good to go to a place where everyone knows your name, even if it's just at home on Zoom. I um, also want to congratulate uh, Yvonne Welch for helping coordinate an important project with IU and other partners to bring IU surplus furniture to the self-isolation center uh, for people impacted by homelessness. That's a great project and, and uh, Yvonne, it went well? And Michael Shermis? It went well. Yeah, it went great. We uh, provided probably 80-90% of the furniture that the the shelter needs and Sean Bueller and the staff there, I think are, are ready to start accepting folks as of, to, as of yesterday. Wow, wonderful. Um, obviously Bloomington Hospital and other healthcare facilities are chronically short of basic protective gear uh, for healthcare uh, providers and staff. If you know of any cash reserves anywhere uh, that could be donated, please contact uh, you know, me, and there are many people around who, who need them. I know Shalom Center has a call out for, for help. Uh, and uh, how about some happy dollars? For this week, we'll still be taking the happy, not the dollars, but please set aside your happy dollars at home each week and make a donation to where it's most useful in our community uh, or send it to the club via PayPal to be uh, sent directed to teacher's warehouse. So members and guests, what are you happy about? Um, this is Judy Bush and Hi. we finished uh, the last episode, we finished the last episode of uh, Riker. That's uh, a nine series, nine or 10 series, uh, uh, series about Riker. And it was fascinating, just utterly fascinating. Okay. Roseanne. Yeah, I'm here. Did you have something you're happy about? I know you got balloons. <laughs> yeah. I'm always happy about balloons, but I, I have happy dollars for our new puppy, uh, Bucky. He has just been the greatest pleasure since uh, this whole crisis started. He's a great distraction, puts smiles on our faces. <laughs> Do a lot of hiking. <laughs> Great. And this is Glenda. Um, my, my camera has been working, but today I haven't pushed the right button, so I hope you can hear me anyway. Yes, Glenda. I'm celebrating because on Friday night, we did connect with Patrick's sister and two nieces and families on Zoom to celebrate Patrick's birthday, since obviously we weren't at dinner like we usually are for his birthday. So I'm celebrating. All right. Um, Aaron, this is Natalie. Hey, I just wanted Anna. to let everyone know that my granddaughter turned four months old yesterday and rolled <laughs> over. <laughs> She's adorable, Natalie. Yeah, time to child proof, right? <laughs> That yeah, Aaron. Process. Aaron. Yes. This is Judy Schroeder, Hi, and Judy. I'm happy that the star magnolias are in bloom, and the <laughs> orchidia is in bloom, and the daffodils are in bloom, and Bloomington is well named. <laughs> I got something. Yes. This is Jean. Hmm. I'm going to have to cut out a little early because a friend of mine's daughter, Caroline, is having her birthday today, and we're doing a virtual, we're going to do a drive through past her house, honk our horn, and wish Caroline a happy birthday, and that's at, <laughs> that's at one o'clock, so there is a way to celebrate even a child's birthday, so I'm going to have to cut out a few minutes early so I can get over there. That's cool. <laughs> yeah, it's kind of cool. 
Aaron, I have something. Uh, Phil, yes. 50 years ago tomorrow, on April the 1st, I had graduated from medical school the end of March. So 50 years ago tomorrow, I started my internship at the old St. Vincent. 50 wow. years is a long time. Wow, congratulations. Yes, congrats, that's great. I have something. I've got, I've got one too. Sandy. Yes. Um, on Sunday with the huge gust of winds that we had, we gathered some of the kids and their parents from our neighborhood with social distancing, and we got three kites up in the air. And wow. so it was just kind of a nice respite for people to celebrate and be in their own little sections in the yard. So um, it was just fun with all the wind and the kites up in the air to celebrate during all this virus stuff. Very good. And, and I had uh, one as well, which was, uh, uh, I became a grandfather again on the 6th of March. Uh, my daughter had a, a, little, a second little boy named Fletcher. And so thrilled, everybody is locked in in California. <laughs> The husband, uh, her husband uh, was going to be home uh, on paternity leave and they said, well, you'll stay there and uh, you'll work from home after your paternity leave. So, so they're all locked in, which is great. Thanks, yeah, Dave. And, and who else? Who else? Well, I have, uh, it's, uh, I have a three-year-old. Oh, who else? Other people. Sorry, I'll, I'll just talk forever. So, no, so. about you, Dave. <laughs> Thanks for sharing that. I see you changed locations again. Huh? How to keep it interesting. Okay, is anyone else said Ashley, you've got you have something to be happy about. Oh, I've got lots of things no, to be happy about. No, I'm really happy about we're still having the district speech contest Daddy, this Saturday on Zoom. So if anyone wants to join us, you uh, can show up to this link that we have our Rotary meetings on starting at 10 a.m. on Saturday. And I ask that you not put your video on. We don't want to intimidate the kids, um, but just chime in to listen and they're going to present their wonderful speeches and we're going to have present a winner by the end of the contest. And I'm really looking forward to trying it out on a new platform. Great. And Megan Gearhart, do we have a, a report from the student diaspora? You're mute. Well, I got stuck at my parents' house in Fort Wayne. Um, so I was planning to be back at my apartment in Bloomington and that hasn't quite happened. But I know a lot of students are not particularly happy about the online classes. I'm personally interested to see how it turns out. Um, but I'm very happy that they gave us the option of having an S grade. So if my internet starts cutting out I don't have to worry about failing all of my classes. Okay. Okay. Jessica Hain, might you have something to be uh, want to be happy about here? <laughs> so wonderful to have you here. Andy. I'm happy. I'm happy that um, I am joining you today virtually with my husband sitting socially distant over at his computer, and we're both wearing our brand new rotary shirts. Yay! Yes. Excellent. Uh, anyone else? <clears throat> oh, no, Aaron? Yes. It's John Bush. And I just want to say that it took a pandemic for people to really appreciate all the computer geeks in the world so they could get together for meetings. Yes. Yes, yes indeed. So, yeah, thank you all. Um, unless there's anyone else who, who wants to jump in, we can move on to our program. Okay, so um, I want to introduce a very special person before the very special person that Jim Bright will introduce. And, and mine is uh, District Governor Santana Naidu, um, who's gonna give a brief, brief update. Uh, District Governor Naidu joined the Rotary Club of Terre Haute in 2004 and has served his club and the district in many capacities. He's the seventh Rotary District Governor from Terre Haute. Now, I'm not competitive, but with Jessica Hain and the newest nominee, Bloomington will soon claim 
14. <laughs> um, so Santana and his wife, Amy, have a son, Cam, and I want to give him another very warm Bloomington welcome. And Santana, they do. <laughs> You're on mute. Can you hear me okay? Yes. Hi, Santana. Wait, I can't hear you now again. Can you hear me now? Yes. Okay. So <laughs> hopefully this time it, it should work. So uh, uh, thank you again for inviting me. And it's so great to see all of you and, you know, join virtually. I'm just really excited uh, that Rotarians all around our district and around the world, even in light of all the things that's happening, uh, were able to find a way to get together and uh, enjoy some fellowship. So first of all, I want to congratulate Becky, who's the newest uh, Rotarian in our district. So congratulations, Becky. And uh, welcome, Floyd, to our district virtually. So hopefully you'll be able to join us in person at our district before uh, this Rotary year is over. And um, I just have a few updates, uh, but before I jump in there, I also want to uh, congratulate Aaron for bringing all of us together and the rest of your committee. I know Aaron has been very helpful in helping some of the other clubs uh, figure out a way to organize and meet in uh, Zoom as well. So thanks, Aaron. Uh, in the form of updates, first of all, congratulations to uh, Lance Eberly on his nomination. Um, Hopefully we'll be able to have a business meeting at our district here pretty soon and uh, officially elect him, but congratulations Lance uh, on your nomination to be the DGND. And the second one is the district conference. As uh, many of you know, we've had to cancel the district conference along with pets and the uh, international convention. But uh, while it's sad to see that the events being canceled, I believe that's the right thing to do. And hopefully we'll have a chance to uh, get together if things improve before the end of the Rotary year. I stay optimistic and hopefully we'll uh, have a chance to see a lot of you in June. Uh, two other quick updates, uh, district designated funds. Uh, we had a chance to meet uh, some people on the call, Jessica, Kirk Bushy, uh, Betty, and a few others had a chance to meet. You'll get an update uh, from Betty here pretty soon. Um, I know that most of the clubs have already finished the uh, 1920 grant cycle and so that's great and I know for the clubs that were challenged because of the COVID and not being able to uh, meet their commitment uh, we're going to work with you to have some flexibility but also going into next year uh, Rotary International has opened up uh, the possibility to uh, apply for uh, pre-date and uh, request some of the support that you're providing to local communities starting in mid-March so you'll get some information on that from Betty uh, here pretty soon. And last but not least, I want to leave you with this, and this is probably my message to the club leaders, uh, is especially in this time of uh, economic um, challenges, I, I really request you to consider um, the due structure that you have and be flexible with some members as needed. I know some clubs in our district, for example, Columbus Noon has suspended issuing any membership uh, dues for now and they're pulling money from their reserves to support them. I just think that it's very critical that we can't afford to lose the Rotarians or not be sensitive in this time uh, by hitting them up with uh, with an invoice for next year's membership. So please consider that in your board meeting. So uh, that's all the updates I have. Uh, be happy to answer any questions you might have. If not, um, I'll turn it over to Jim. Yeah, Jim. Jim Bright. Well, okay. thank you, everyone. Thank you, Santana. Thank you, thank you, Santana. Um, it's uh, a, a real honor and it's a treat to have with us today uh, our uh, director uh, from who's joining us from his home in uh, Fort Wayne. Um, uh, Floyd Lancia is a member of the Anthony Wayne Club there in Fort Wayne. He's one of 17 directors in the world. Um, he's director for zones 30 and 31, which include all three Indiana districts. Uh, it's 
Um, the two zones are often known as, in Rotary, as the heart of America. Um, they include 13 states, 30-plus uh, districts, 1,300-plus clubs, and 60,000-plus uh, Rotarians. Um, he's got a lot of responsibility. Um, it's my pleasure, then, to uh, bring on board our director, uh, Floyd Lancia. Floyd? Thank you, Jim. And Aaron, thank you for allowing me to be part of this virtual meeting. You know, there are really special times in our lives. Many of them occur when we share Rotary with our friends. We all know that we're having some very difficult times and every opportunity that we can have by getting together and doing even virtual meetings gives us that sense of belonging. And that's really how Rotary began years and years ago. And I not only do I want to thank Jim and Aaron, but I want to congratulate Santana for doing for having a good year. And by the way, I want to announce that he will be an assistant Rotary Foundation coordinator beginning next year. He has been approved by Rotary International uh, because of his standing and his support of the Rotary Foundation. So thank you for will your willingness to serve. I I want to also comment on the on the scholars. Um, you know. It's, it's a rare opportunity to have three scholars from one club or one district, and for you to have them, uh, it's just spectacular. And to see the opportunity that you've given them to advance their, their skills and, and become future Rotarians, we hope, and carry the message to Rotary once, they, once they've graduated. Also, uh, Becky, I got to tell you that your joining Rotary or Rotary accepting you as a member is really pretty special. You'll get a great deal out of Rotary. I know I have over the last X number of years, <laughs> but you will, there's no doubt about it. Uh, Rotary is a family organization. You'll find that the people on the screen and the people that you meet who are Rotarians, and even those that are not Rotarians will recognize you for the status that you have as a Rotarian. So congratulations and welcome as the very first the very newest Rotary member in the world. So welcome, you'll enjoy it a great deal. You know, uh, the, the fact that, that the Bloomington Club has been in existence for 100 plus years, and I, you know, I, I was at your celebration, and I have to tell you that being of service to your community and globally in 100 years plus is really a unique situation that many don't get the opportunity to do. And for you to be able to do that and to celebrate the way you did when you had uh, past RI President Ian Risley there was really pretty spectacular. And I wanna congratulate you and hope that you'll continue the things that you do so well in supporting events in your community. For example, the teacher's warehouse and the other things that you do that, you, that, that make your community very special because you're there. You know, oftentimes uh, I'm asked, what would happen in a community that has a small club? What would happen if that club would abandon its charter? It's hard to say what would happen, but I would say that there'd be a great loss in that community. So what you're doing and the support that you're giving to your community is greatly appreciated by everyone in the community, as well as the satisfaction that the members get in being of service. You know, you also have a strong commitment to the Rotary Foundation, and I, I'm a real strong opponent, a proponent of the Rotary Foundation because it's so important because that actually is the heart and soul of the, enables us to do the things that we do in Rotary through the grants that we, that we put together. Not only that we do locally, but enable us to do things globally, for example, recently in working with Santana, the support that your district gave to a, to a proposal put together by past RI President Ravi Ravindran to put something together as a, a project to help <clears throat> with, the, with the coronavirus episode in Sri Lanka was really essential for us to reach out to communities that are a little less fortunate or even in that particular case, a country that has suffered a civil war for so many years and they're trying to recover and trying to do some good things and the Rotary Clubs there as well as those who have supported that project, including yours, 
uh, a hand goes, uh, 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 accolade goes out and, and the round of applause for, for what you're doing. And thank you, Santana, for stepping up and doing that. You know, when we can get together, whether it be through this venue or any other venue, it just brings so much joy in what we do. I was so happy to hear about all these happy books that you that you've contributed to the fund, whatever the fund is. I mean, we do the same thing. We do it for scholarships in our in our in our club. But you know, the thing is, is that so it's that's so important is that people have come together and it's such a rewarding thing to see how we've all come together. You know, I've seen folks who have put songs together with parodies about make sure you make sure you sanitize, make sure you wash your hands and I mean things that can't that have me have so much meaning nowadays to us. And the fact that you have a, you're planning on a Rotary Cafe. I was on one on Saturday night. They have one every Saturday night and you got to bring your own drink. Um, and then someone someone suggested that someone provide snacks. Now, I don't know how they're going to do that, but nonetheless, it's, a, it's just a lot of fun. And I think it gives us an opportunity to expand upon the fellowship that Rotary has created way back in 1905. You know, the big picture that exists that we have to deal with is polio. Polio is still a scourge in our, in our world. The problem that we have with that is that we still have three countries, actually two, uh, hopefully uh, if we can hold off in Nigeria for the next couple of months, they will be taken off the endemic list. Then all the countries in the African continent will be considered polio free. But the thing that's important that we have to fight is the, the, those folks that have, that don't care about human life, the people that, that, hurt people who are immunizers and so on. And in particular in Pakistan, for example, Pakistan just in the last three months has had 32 cases of polio and Afghanistan too. So we have a total of 34. But you know, the bigger picture though, is that as Rotary International <clears throat> continues its fight and the support from clubs and districts throughout the world to get rid of this scourge, we have to face this COVID uh, uh, the Cor Coronado uh, virus, the COVID-19, um, the thing that, that we are able to do is that Rotary has established throughout the world, especially in developing countries, uh, research centers and surveillance programs where they have enabled things like the Ebola to prevent the Ebola from coming to our country years, a few years ago, and the H1N1, which was, was which we were able to help provide immunizations and, and research on how to eliminate that and so on. We're called upon again by the, by the world organizations to see what we can do with the researches, research centers that we have and the surveillance that we have it becomes a moral imperative for us as Rotarians to continue our fight, not only to support the effort to eradicate polio, but keep in mind that what we do also helps other diseases in, in other parts of the world. So I would remind you that we need to remain strong. We need to remain very supportive of this effort. And as Rotarians, I think we all know the importance of, of life and how important it is for us to get together and be, be joined in our efforts in order to be able to do things that will improve the world that we live in. And I, I'd be glad to answer any questions if you have any, but I, I told both Aaron and Jim that I didn't plan on being the program. I just wanted to make some remarks and tell you how much I appreciate what you're doing. So I'd be glad to answer any questions. Thank you, Floyd. Um, it's, it's such a pleasure and honor to have you here. So thank you. Well, thank you. It's my pleasure to be here. And if there are questions, we have some time. Uh, Floyd, uh, Jim Bright. Um, I know that, as I mentioned, you have uh, uh, 1,300 or more clubs under your wing, and you must uh, you know, hear about some amazing projects and um, you know, going on across uh, the two zones. Um, is there anything um, recently that you've heard about that uh, going on in our zone that 
uh, you'd like to share uh, as you know somebody out there who's doing something innovative, creative, a best practice? Well, I, tell, I will tell you this, so that about a week or so ago, the, the trustees of the Rotary Foundation approved a one-time exemption to give us uh, to, to deal with this COVID-19 related uh, thing. So we're able to uh, now use district designated funds in order to be able to do grants to deal with that locally for, for our communities. So, I mean, that, that's probably the hot, uh, the hot thing right now, Jim. I mean, there are a lot of good things that go on in communities, as you know, but, but the hot ticket right now is the, is the COVID-19 and how can we deal with that? And, and, and I was on a meeting, one of these types of meetings just a week or so ago, and my, I made a suggestion to the board of directors. I said, you know, I would hope, I, first thing I said is this, this is gonna, this is gonna cast a large shadow across the world, including Rotary. For example, the, the canceling of the convention, the canceling of so many district conferences and so on. But I said, in addition to that, it's hopeful that number one, the staff members would come up with some protocol that will enable us all to stay together in some fashion and for the board of trustees to come together in some fashion in order to be able to allow us to put funds together to help with this crisis that we're in. And sure enough, I know that the staff is working on a variety of things to make things better as far as keeping us connected because all meetings in Evanston have been canceled. They'll be, they'll be out of there. Actually, they're working at home and they've been working at home since last Thursday. They'll continue working at home until the end of April, perhaps no longer, hopefully no longer. All approved travel for Rot Rotarians, uh, approved travel through Rotary International has all been canceled. So all international travel, all local travel, inter in domestic, and so it's all been it's all been canceled, and rightly so. I mean, you know, I've had several trips canceled that I haven't been able to do, and all the meetings in Evanston have been canceled, including anything that I had to go up for board meetings. But what they're doing is we're we're having we're having our board meetings online, and uh, it's it's important for us to be able to stay and stay community stay in stay in touch because it's so it's, we're such a large organization and we have so many critical areas in the in in the world that need to be dealt with uh, and, and every little bit that we do no matter whether we do it through um, through our foundation or whether we do it just through what we do locally with our clubs it's just we just need to continue doing that I, I hope I've answered your question a little bit I kind of kind of I kind of went off on a deep end, but um, hopefully I answered a little bit of it. Thank you. Thank you, Director uh, Lancia. Thank you. And now, uh, to wrap up, um, in honor of today's celebration of service, we will include a donation as part of our quarterly contribution to local charity, My Sister's Closet. Uh, at the end of the meeting next week, Ashley Sullivan will draw another charity out of her hat uh, to be the next quarter. Um, our next celebration of service will be April 7th on Zoom. Our speaker will be Lieutenant Colonel Angela Reber, a fellow at the U.S. Army War College in Carlisle, Carlisle, Pennsylvania. She will talk on the U.S. Army in Europe in the last decade. A personal perspective. That's uh, going to be interesting, different and interesting. Thought of the week. Please join me in thanking those here and around the world who put in countless hours of planning and preparation for district conferences, presidential trainings, and our international convention and other events. Events may be canceled, but the dedication and inspiration of Rotarians is a constant even when disappointment momentarily crushes us. But to paraphrase the words of Maya Angelou, still we rise. So join me please uh, in the four-way test. In a second. There we go. Thank you, Ellen. So, of the things we think, we think say, say it or do. do. Is it the truth? Is it, the truth? Is it, is it fair, fair to, to all, all concerned? concerned? 
Will it build goodwill and better friendships? Will it be beneficial to all concerned? Is it fun? Is it fun? Hi, all. Thank you. All right, goodbye, everyone. Thanks, Thank everyone. You. Thank you. All right, congratulations. Enjoy the rest of the week. Thank you, Thank you guys so much. Yeah. Thank you for the celebration of service. Please move your mouse to the lower right hand corner of your screen and click on the button. Thank you. Thank you very Thank much. You, Thank you, Thanks, Thank everybody. You Good to see you all. It's been great. Stay well. Hello. You too. Hello. Hey, Alex. <laughs>